everyone. Today we will be introducing your next project, which is a storytelling film. For this project, you will be creating a film of yourself telling a children's story or picture book um, through the use of vocal expression for characters and interesting vocal traits, things like that, and also with the help of visual aids. Good storytelling is an art form. A good storyteller draws you in and takes you on the adventure of the book. Um, I bet if you think about it, you can think back to one magical storyteller from your childhood. Maybe it was the librarian storyteller that was fantastic. Maybe a parent or a grandparent was an amazing storyteller when you were young. Maybe it was a teacher. Either way, hopefully there is somebody that you can think of that was just a phenomenal storyteller. So let's talk about what storytelling is not. Storytelling films is not you sitting and reading a book to me on camera in a very boring monotone voice. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. I will say that if some of you have phenomenal storytelling films, that there is a chance these will be passed on to some elementary teachers to actually post in their Google Classrooms and use with some of their little students. <laughs> with your permission, of course. There are two very important aspects of the storytelling film um, that you need to keep in mind and that you need to use in your film. One is vocal characterization while you're narrating. And the second is the use of visual aids, images, things like that to really enhance your storytelling. So what do I mean by vocal characterization while you narrate? Well, for starters, the tone of your voice, whether you're narrating on camera or doing a voiceover or narrating from off camera, the tone of your voice should match the mood at that particular point in the story. So if there's something super scary or spooky happening, maybe I'm narrating that way. Or if it's very, very exciting and it's building up to something awesome, I can use my voice to tell those things to adjust that mood. Um, you can also use your voice uh, for specific characters. Maybe they have accents or really high-pitched or very low voices that you're using for your character throughout. Absolutely, you can give your characters voices uh, and use that throughout your story to really amplify what's happening. That second element of storytelling that I mentioned was the use of visual aids. Those are things that you're going to use while you're making your film. So that could be filming the illustrations from the book. Great. Maybe that, maybe you're an awesome animator and you want to actually create animation to add in. Perfect. Maybe there are pictures or images that you're finding on the internet that goes with your story. Excellent. You want to incorporate that again so that it's not just you sitting in front of the camera reading. You're creating this film of storytelling. One thing that you need to know right off the bat is that we are looking at a three-ish minute film. So this is not something that, you know, should be a eight, 10, 12 minute film. Certainly if you wanna really go all out and add some things, it can be a little bit longer. But please know that, you know, somewhere around a three minute storytelling film is just fine. Now I wanna talk about choosing your story, which is a very, very important place to start. Um, you want to make sure when you're choosing a story that you're considering things like the length of the story. We talked about around a three, three to four minute video. Uh, are there pictures that are available to you, the illustrations? Uh, the more of those that you have available, the easier it might make it for yourself when you're including visual aspects into your film. Uh, are there great characters or really interesting point of view? Can I have fun with this story? 
You might have books laying around your house to choose from, but if you don't, that's okay too. I'm including links to various libraries, places where you can get eBooks of different children's stories or picture books so that everybody can find something that they can work with. When I'm choosing my story, this, not a great choice, quite lengthy. I would be uh, creating a, a storytelling film that was hours long if I chose that book. <laughs> this one might look great at first until you start going through and you realize there are lots of pages that have lots and lots of words and story. So this may be longer than something that I'm looking for for this project. <laughs> Another example, some people have asked about compilations and stories that are in a compilation. This has tons and tons of stories. And yes, I could choose just one of these. For example, this page is one story. One thing to consider is that I just have this one illustration to go with this story. Now, if I was going to create my own artwork, maybe I'm an artist and I like to draw. Maybe I'm going to find images from the internet to use. Um, maybe there are other versions of this is Cinder Rumple Stiltskin, so I could find other images that probably would go with this, but it's a little bit more work from, from that perspective. Something like this would be perfect. Lots of pictures, small amounts of words for the most part on each page, enough to keep your audience entertained while you go through, but not a ton of words so that we get into a really, really long video. Another piece of information that will be helpful is that with this project, the planning is key. Um, uh, the next time that we meet in class, I will share with you an example of a script, which is really just the text from the storybook, um, and kind of how to organize that and write out and plan what you want your audience to see during each portion of that. That will make things quite a bit easier for you, even though it's not something you're turning into me. Trust me, it will help you. Um, another thing to remember is that next Monday is Memorial Day. So for those of you in first, second, or third hours, we will not officially be meeting on that day. There will not be school on that day. But your project is still due on the same day, so you may have to plan accordingly um, and make sure that you're not leaving everything to the last minute. Additionally, with that, try not to leave all of your editing to the last five minutes. This is a project where you'll probably have multiple clips that you're putting together into one project. It might take you a little bit longer to edit this one and put the clips together in order. And that's okay. Just make sure that you're planning accordingly and leaving yourself enough time for editing. I've had a lot of questions with some of these projects. For this one, yes, it's okay if you're not physically on film. If you are showing pictures, illustrations, animations, clips, things like that while you are voicing over and using your vocal expressions, that is absolutely okay. Just make sure you don't forget about your vocal expression, bringing your characters to life and doing all that through your voice. My final piece of advice for you is to have fun with this project. Imagine that you are reading to a younger sibling, family member, cousin, neighbor kid, um, know that your audience is going to feed off of your energy. If you have fun with it and really get into it, the more they're going to have fun with it and get into your video as well. Don't forget, it is always okay to go above and beyond. Maybe some of you want to add costume pieces that make sense for your book or create like a story storytelling area where you're going to, you know, film parts of, of your film. Maybe you have puppets or props that you want to include. As long as it makes sense with your book, go for it. Is it required? No. Could it be fun? Absolutely. It's going to be awesome. You guys rock. I'm super excited to see all of your storytelling films.